You like peaches too, don't you? Well, you can see that somebody's already digging in on the peaches and that's perfectly fine because we have so many, many hundreds and hundreds of peaches here. They're not exactly huge, but they are very sweet. Already taste of them. They're rather on the small side, and I think it's just because they're so close together. But I can't even begin to tell you how many peaches this tree has already dropped from overabundance. Uh, thousands, literally thousands of peaches have dropped from this tree because they weren't ready, or it was just too heavy. I didn't have to thin them out because this tree thinned itself out but it still has got so many peaches that the branches are actually lying on the ground. Not being an uh, expert on fruit trees, I really don't know when the peaches are pulled, picked, I really don't know how I'm supposed to prune this tree to get it back, back in order again because this is just too weird for it to be this heavy laden with fruit that it just topples over. Some of the limbs are on the roof some of the other limbs are over there on top of the greenhouse roof. I mean, it's just loaded, loaded, loaded. So this tree just had more than it could handle. And I'm going to have to do something about that. If you know anything about peach trees, please let me know how to prune this tree after we've taken the fruit off. But look at all that wasted fruit. Just look at that. Not really wasted. The peacocks, the chickens are eating it. And the donkeys love it too. So it doesn't go to waste. Well, I came out here just to get enough peaches to make a peach cobbler for the 4th of July. However, I ended up with an awful lot more than I expected. And so I'll probably have to take some of these and can some more peaches. I might dry some of these. And I think I'm also going to use the vacuum sealer on several. And the rest will eat fresh. I want to get the skins off easily, so I've just dipped them into super hot water almost boiling water. I'm going to leave them in there for about 30 seconds. I'm going to move them into an ice bath and then the skin peelings will come right off. This is the same thing you do if you're going to can peaches. See they just peel right off. That is so easy. It's so easy as long as you don't have to do about 200 peaches, <laughs> which is a lot. It's probably what I'll have to do with a lot of these peaches that are left over in order to can them. I've got seven tablespoons of butter here. I'm going to put it in this casserole dish into the oven at 350 and just let the butter melt. Okay, I've pitted and halved my peaches. I'm going to put them on medium heat with a quarter cup of white sugar, granulated sugar, and a quarter cup of brown sugar. And I'm going to just stir this, heat it up until the sugar is completely dissolved. You can find peach cobbler recipes all day long on YouTube. In fact, this is that's where I found this one. But um, my mother used to make peach cobbler with Bisquick, and I didn't really want to go that route. I never used biscuit bisquick ever since I was at home cooking with my mom. So I just want this to dissolve. And right about now that butter should have be melted in the oven. You know, I'm going to add a little cinnamon to this because I like it a little bit spicy. I love cinnamon, so I'm going to add a little bit of cinnamon on the top. This is a half a teaspoon. No, actually, this is a teaspoon. 
And you could add any other slices that you like. Now I'm ready to take the butter, melted butter, out of the oven and on to the next step. A quarter cup of sugar, one cup of flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, and one teaspoon of salt. One quarter teaspoon of salt. Mix these ingredients up pretty good and then I'm going to add one cup of whole milk. One cup. One cup. Mix this up pretty nicely till it's nice and smooth and then you're going to pour it right on top of that butter in the casserole dish. Pour that right on top of the butter. And I'm going to scoop these beautiful cooked peaches over the top. Just right on top. really loaded with peaches. Hmm, I hope I didn't get too many peaches. 350 for about 30 minutes. Yum. I'm going to make a corn chowder and a peach cobbler using some of those fresh peaches that I picked this morning off that really abundant tree. And here are my ingredients. I'm going to be using four ears of corn, two to three small red potatoes, one to two cups of chopped celery, a half a cup of milk, one and a half cups of light cream or half and half, two cups of chicken broth, one small can of green chopped green chilies. I'm probably going to use two red peppers and as far as the spices go, I will let you know what they are as I put them in. In the meantime, I'm going to chop these up. You want to finely mince your onions. With the potatoes, you want those chopped pretty small because we're just going to saute this in about three tablespoons of butter.
Okay, I'm melting three tablespoons of butter here in my pan. And I'm going to add the onions, the celery, and the green peppers and saute those until they're tender. And I'm afraid I got a few of the potatoes mixed up with the um, onions, so a few potatoes might be falling in here too right now, but you really should wait on the potatoes. So we are adding our one stalk of celery and our two red peppers. A little sloppy here. Our chopped onion. I've got my heat on medium high and I'm stirring constantly. Okay, I've added the potatoes. You actually could add them all at the same time because it doesn't really matter. It actually takes potatoes a little longer to cook, so Turn my heat down to four. All right, this has been cooking now in here for about ten minutes. So I am now I'm going to stir in the flour. So I have two tablespoons of flour here. Now to cook that for about two more minutes. You can see that my potatoes are getting nice and soft. Onions are nicely sautéed and the peppers are pretty tender. Okay, I let that cook another extra two minutes. And now I'm going to add the broth, the chicken broth, which is two cups of chicken broth. And I'm also going to add the spices. And the spices are just a half a teaspoon of parsley, dried parsley, and a half a teaspoon of basil. Now I'm going to let this simmer on low for about 30 minutes. Get it good and stirred in. That's really pretty, isn't it? Look at those colors. Oh, I love that. Okay, now it's time to add your milk and your corn and your cream. Just be sure that your potatoes are nice and tender before you add all these other items because you don't want to overcook that corn in your chowder. So we have one and a half cups of milk. I'm sorry, that was one and a half cups of light cream. And A half a cup of milk and our corn. And so our corn was two cups or four ears of corn. This is fresh corn off the cob. Now you can heat that up again, but don't bring it to a boil. Just let it reheat. And then it's ready to serve. Now, normally I would have added the chopped green chilies to this, but you might have a guest who cannot have spicy food, so I'm just going to serve the green chilies on the side of the soup. So we're going to let that, oh, that's going to be very good. We're going to let that reheat, let the corn cook.
and it'll be ready to put in the serving dish. Today's bouquet on our July table, hollyhocks, and some beautiful bee balm, and some larkspur, some Queen Anne's lace. Uh, we still have sweet peas that are blooming on the vines, and this wonderful pink Sunday coneflower, which really lasts a long time in a vase. And also, I've noticed bee balm lasts an extremely long time in a vase. So that's a wonderful combination. And once again, this is not a formal bouquet. I don't make those. I just make country bouquets, wild gardens in a pot. Meal set to go right here on the front porch. We're using country cottage dinnerware from Sangastone. This is from the 1980s. Picked it up last year from a thrift shop. The only thing missing were two bowls. So I'm always on the lookout for those soup and salad bowls. And on the table we have this wonderful clam, or sorry, corn chowder, which is really great for any time of the year. It's really delicious, but it's pretty hot, so we want to cool it down with some watermelon, put some color on the table as well. Although that's a very colorful and delicious looking chowder, isn't it? Here we have good old American potato salad, and here is the cobbler that we made. We're going to serve that with vanilla ice cream as well. We also have sliced ham on the side. So this was actually a 4th of July meal, but I didn't get this video out on time. So it's really great for any time, any time, any time of the year. So, bon appetit, <laughs> and we are ready to eat.